you know, for a long time, I was, I'll say a long time. I say for about four and a half years, um, about five years ago, I was a vegetarian and it was largely mm-hmm. because of my, my feeling on, you know, the, the meat industry was horrible. Um, and I just, I didn't want to participate in, you know, that level, um, or what I saw is like just deep, you know, insane suffering, um, of other beings. And, um, and I was close to like being a vegan and because, I, and you know, if you follow the logic down of vegetarianism, um, if you're trying to cause the least harm, then it seems like vegan seems like the only response, like the only true response, mm-hmm. um, that eventually, you know, if you follow it down, you got to be vegan. Um, if that's, if that's what you're trying to hold. Um, and there was a moment when I came close to it and when, you know, I sort of had this, um, kind of re about face and it wasn't, and I'm not saying this is the right thing at all. I'm just saying this is what happened for me was, you know, really coming to awareness about, um, that, you know, and this is, I think, where a lot of the cynicism comes in with humanity as a whole, uh, a lot of what permeates environmentalism as a whole, which is if you think of uh, if your conception of humanity is basically uh, that we're here basically as a mistake. You know, that, that mm-hmm. basically, yeah. you know, the life would be fine without us, that, you know, we humans can't really do much else except, you know, kind of fuck up the rest of the planet. Then then basically right. harm reduction becomes like the ultimate goal. Right. So in a lot of environmentalism, this is actually at least the sort of mainstream environmentalism. This is where, it, you know, the unconscious programming is this, that, you know, if only we could cause less harm, then we would be, you know, sort of justified for being here. Right. And mm-hmm. um, I want to kind of um, introduce maybe that, you know, there's lots of peoples uh, on the planet that don't think that way. You know, that that a lot of indigenous right. cultures, you know, have this conception of the human that, you know, we have a very noble and proper place in the web of life and their way of being in the world isn't sort of animated by simply harm reduction you know certainly they're a lot more tuned to consequence of themselves in the world which is why a lot of you know ceremony and um you know ways of being are are kind of a they call it almost like a a choreographed memory memory that that it's sort of like hey Mm -hmm. realizing that you know that we belong to place and we don't own place you know, these kinds of things are like woven into the fabric of the culture. And so um, from that right. place, then you start to realize that uh, a lot of uh, our kind of answers in a way, or a lot of the people's grappling with questions, you know, human consequence, um, you know, say animal cruelty, like all these things, often the response is based on um, like the reaction to the way it is. Uh, so in a way, like mm-hmm. veganism can be seen often as a response to like the, the cruelty, but as a way it it's, it doesn't, though, get oneself out of the fact that, you know, like I said earlier, for life to continue, other things have to die. Right. That, you know, and this is why you start yeah. to trouble with things like, you know, right. if everybody ate, started eating quinoa, then, you know, everybody in Peru, I think is already the case, barely can afford it anymore. Um, and, you know, it's built upon a kind yeah. of shipping yeah. it in from a place far away that, um, you know, the, all the fossil fuels and like, so it starts to get more complex, right? As soon as you try to land anywhere with, well, if I just do this, I kind of, then I'll be okay. You know, then I'll be, then I'll be right or then I'll be pure. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess it, you know, it's an invitation to, to realize the world's a bit more complex and often, you know, sorrowful. And this question around grief for me, you know, through people like Stephen Jenkinson, you know, there's, there's a capacity or, a, or a, you know, sort of necessity, necessity of grieving. But I also think it's not something that like you get through. You know, it's not, it's not like you're kind of, okay, we're done grieving now. It's mm. like now we can be happy again. Um, I actually think like true grieving or the quality to the, the ability to grieve is the, also how you can be so deeply like, um, fulfilled by life itself. You know, that, that your ability to tap into joy is because you're also capable of grieving deeply. Um, as opposed to a kind of swamp, mm-hmm. you know, of sorrow that a lot of people, um, recognize depression is. Depression is like this abyss of sorrow, which, you know, yeah. Stephen has this line where he just says, you know, depression is what happens when grief isn't allowed in the room. You know, like the capacity to actually mm-hmm. grieve is how, you know, it's right. a different quality entirely. Um, and so, you know, again, so getting back to the gender question, which is I see again, you know, in a lot of this idea that, well, there's no such, you know, thing as masculine, feminine or, you know, men and women is just a social construct. Like I see their kind of reactionary response to the wound of the way it is you know like and so it's this idea that well if we just throw out Mm -hmm. gender entirely then maybe we'd be okay 
you know, and I feel I feel like that's often the the argument that's made. Yeah. And yet the kind of the kind of let's say mm-hmm. biological experience of so many is that wait a second, like but but it it seems true. Like there at least there is a sort of recognizable, you know, discernment of like that there's qualitative difference between, you know, what we can come to understand as constellates as, you know, a man or woman and absolutely this um sort of emergent mm-hmm. quality of, of, you know, sometimes called two spirit or trans, like all of these are like, th- I guess I could say that in a culture that truly understands and like um, upholds polarity in like in a beautiful way and like knows how to carry it, mm-hmm. then the diversity in the polarity is not a problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and I've, I've been, in, I've been in circles right. of men where, you know, where men yeah, are like yeah. deeply kind of grounded and trusting of each other. And, you know, all of a sudden the, the kind of, uh, you know, man that doesn't fit the kind of macho stereotype, like in those circles, it's not a problem. Like that, the, the full diversity of what could be, right. you know, the expression of man is allowed and it's actually, um, seen and, you know, also, you know, welcomed. And it's only in the places where, you know, we're so deeply wounded and trying to find our footing that, um, that's the places where, you know, people end up getting traumatized and oppressed. And, and so we think by throwing it all out, that's the answer. And yet, you know, I've come to understand that it's about coming back mm-hmm. into right relationship um, with these polarities, you know, rebuilding a true culture of like trust and solidarity among men, that that's the place where we can start to find and to, you know, create um, a new story. Mm-hmm.